Hello, people of God. You are welcome to Kingdom Salmon TV. We are independent people. We share content of our father and mentor, Apostle Joshua Selman, in order to help to build the body of Christ. As you listen, remain ever blessed. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. It's my joy again to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, first and foremost, I'd like you to help me bless the Lord for Pastor Jerry and his wife. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then, please, let's honor Dr. David Ogwele. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm here only but for a short time and I pray that this moment will bless our hearts. Tonight is truly a moment of unusual encounters. Father help us, we depend on you. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let your life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom that it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your glory fall. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory help us, Holy Spirit, open our eyes that we may see. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak so that our hearts will hear, lift us to higher dimensions in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please be seated. I'll just give a charge and then we'll pray and I'll be back to my seat and we trust that the session we'll have with the man of God will be most inspiring he's a veteran of the gospel he truly understands the kingdom and I pray that your heart will be open as we learn but I just want to touch on just a little charge the Bible says that the sons of Issachar there was a tribe of Issachar and the Bible says that these men had understanding of the times and that they knew what Israel ought to do it's dangerous to not know what to do there are three levels of the anointing that comes upon believers the first level comes upon a believer according to scripture when you are grafted into Christ in the experience that we call the new birth are we together now there is an unction that is upon a believer by reason of his being grafted into Christ number two there is an anointing that comes upon a believer by reason 
of his office please listen very carefully that when god calls a man there is a backing there are a number of things that follow the call of god upon a man one of it is the empowerment that is sent to honor that office alongside that anointing there are angelic cadres that signify the revelation given to that person revelations 1 verse 1 says the revelation of jesus christ which he gave on to his servant john he said and he sent it and signified it by his angel are we together now these angels excel in strength and they walk within the coordinates of that call number three now listen carefully the third level of the anointing comes upon a man by reason of going through the sacrifice of alignment to be part of god's program per season that is not the anointing that comes upon you just because you are a believer that is not the anointing that comes upon you just because of your office that anointing comes as a testament a product of diligence the sacrifice of discerning like habakkuk he says i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower that i will see what the lord will say so that you are able to discern what the spirit of god is doing in a season and when you pay the price to walk in peace with the holy spirit there is a dimension of reward is a grace that is upon you that makes you relevant as far as the program of god is concerned in that season so it is possible to not be captured in the current dealings of god this is not about backsliding you can still be a believer your office can still be there but as far as the current dealings of god is concerned you did not pursue as proof of your interest and he will honor your will by leaving you at that realm are we blessed yes i say that because i presume that many of us here are born again and there is a dimension of engracing that has come by reason of our being grafted into Christ. Then I presume that there are many ministers, servants of God, people who have answered the call, some who have been in the ministry for a while. Truly, there is a grace upon you by reason of your call. But there is what God is doing in this season. He says, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And when he was worshipped, they called him the God who was, who is, and who is to come. These are dimensions. Knowing the God who was is good but is not enough. There is still the God who is. Are we together? There is this present truth. What God is doing within this season. And I believe that this conference seeks to bring us to not just receive miracles signs and wonders as important as that is but to position us to reveal to us by the spirit the current dealings of the spirit across the nation so that we can understand like the sons of Issachar and know how to align with what God is doing are we together this is very important I'm very passionate about knowing what God is doing because his grace doesn't just honor men his grace honors his program god's grace moves in the direction of his program it looks like he's looking for men but he's only looking for men who are following the program the grace will not come to you just because you want it it will come with respect to your diligent pursuit of god's program when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you went when i sent thee are we blessed the second thing that i want to touch very quickly is by the grace of god i have been a student of revivals i have been a student of the move of god i have studied the move of god across the continents of the earth I have had the privilege 
to meet a few people who were mightily used by God. Some in their lifetime still alive, some have gone to be with the Lord. And I have found out that revivals and the move of God for some reason does not seem to last long enough to deliver that which was intended are we together now so here and there you have a sudden outpouring of the spirit the move of god across a territory mighty things are happening apostles and prophets rising all kinds of things happening and then because there is deficiency in accurate knowledge on how to capture and preserve revivals the move of god becomes aborted through carelessness insensitivity and the humanity of men so if you would give me 10 minutes i want to just share something about preserving the move of god it is not enough to pray for revivals it is not enough to enjoy the presence of revivals we must we must understand the spiritual technology are located for preserving revivals this is what will make a move of god transgenerational so that children will not say parents we once heard that there was a move of god here uh -uh. the nation of israel every time they encountered god he would mandate that they captured his dealings and archived them through several formulas either in scrolls or build a monument around that experience he said when your children ask you tell them this is what happened if we do not know how to preserve revivals there will be a generation that will arise that will not honor the god that we so lavishly pursue are we blessed there are principles and patterns in the scripture that preserve revivals this gospel we have received today have been preserved through the ages by a technology we must not lose respectfully speaking this was the mistake of the western nations when god was moving through their parents and their grandparents they were enjoying and pushing these revivals but they did not create a system for continuity so when satan found out he could not do anything with all the evangelists that these people were almost beyond backsliding they had committed themselves and pledged their lives he left them and came patiently to their children and grew with that generation the generation he grew with are the captains of industry today the generation he grew with listen let me tell you if you are not part of the growth process of a man don't expect to be featured when he gets to the palace a generation will only be loyal to who was there when they were rising coming up arbitrarily with an information and an idea an attempt and wanting a generation to give you attention when you were not there so satan knows this and he came and was patient for over three decades growing patiently with those we used to call children growing patiently and he he brought them and showed them a route to success without god and in the equation of their lives they are yet to see the need for god and if we are not careful that same pattern will come to africa where satan will give up on the current move and say i give up you keep serving your god while i prepare for tomorrow preserving revivals and you pray in the spirit in one minute hallelujah when jesus rose again the bible says he was with the disciples for a period of 40 days according to acts that he was teaching them on the things or the matters of the kingdom are we together now and then he told them they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel 
And he said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his care. Verse 8 says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now listen carefully. It says, when that activity happens to you, it will turn you to become witnesses. Not men of God. Not business people. No. The titles are simply the geography of the assignment. But our mandate corporately is to be witnesses. A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention. When you go to the court of law, are we together now? If you say this happened and someone is objecting, the judge will say introduce a witness. The assignment of a witness is to concretize conviction to make sure that everybody all and sundry believe that that proposition was not a lie so the bible says your assignment is to be witnesses and then he now told you that as witnesses you are mandated to be witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria and then to the utmost part and to do that you shall receive The first thing that happens to you is that the Holy Spirit comes. Power is not the first thing that happens. The personality of the Holy Spirit is introduced to your life. There is something He does before power comes. You have to understand that scripture. Are we together? Yes. Jesus was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come? He said, He will guide you. Even for truth, you must be guided. Because truth can still mislead. It's not a lie alone that deceives. The truth, when not guided, can lead you into error. So just because it is true, does not mean it is profitable. You must be guided. Everything that destroys the body of Christ today came from truth. Not a lie. Error is truth that is stretched within its, beyond its boundary of relevance. So the Holy Spirit has an assignment to not just give you truth but to guide you to set the coordinates for their profitability in your life that means there is something you should know before knowing about prosperity if you don't know it and you just jump to it the lack of that prior knowledge will make that truth to not profit you this is not even where I'm going to I have a few minutes listen carefully that the Holy Spirit was sent to the church as the guarantee that revivals can be preserved not just introduced we know the Holy Spirit as an introducer of the move of God but very few people know him as the preserver but generally speaking there are principles I will just touch on one and then we'll pray. The first spiritual principle that preserves the move of God across a territory is the ministry of prayer. Prayer, the warfare and the intercessory dimension of prayer is one of the kingdom mysteries that can preserve the move of God transgenerationally. Prayer does not only bring the move of God. In the early church, they had prayer cells. They had prayer groups. They didn't just converge to break bread alone. They converge to pray. Did you know that the one thing Satan fought in Babylon was prayer that a parliament came together to meet as though they were meeting about a state affair but it was really because the prayer of Daniel as a single individual was doing something to the spirits of the Medes and the Persians that ruled over the second heavens and a parliament under the influence of those spirits came together that for only
Hallelujah. When this system, this antichrist system that was encapsulated in a woman called Jezebel appeared to fight the purposes of God, then God now sent his prophetic system. I taught you yesterday, the spiritual system that restores the patterns of God. That system is called Elijah. Not just the man, Elijah. Elijah was an embodiment of that system. He used the weapon of prayer to preserve the purposes of God. It was at a time when the prophets of God were in hiding. Why? Because there was a system in a woman called Jezebel. I told you Jezebel is a system that only is activated when she sits with government. It's a system that fights influence.
the dead woman. And as the testimony was eventually going to enter, and the person said that as soon as they heard that, meanwhile, and to align but you must trust God for grace to find your prayer altar once again for he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint and you must trust God for the grace not to neglect the corporate gathering of the saints not for the purpose of a religious ritual for the purpose of enlightenment submitting yourself to the doctrine of the apostles to grow according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. To be filled with the knowledge of his will. To be filled with all wisdom and with all spiritual understanding. This is the purpose of that convergence. And then number three, to trust God. Not just to receive miracles, but to become a conduit. That you will be able to hold superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. This and more remain the keys, the irrefutable keys that will preserve God and His purposes in our life. Can I pray for you? Spare me five minutes, Pastor, just to say a word of prayer. For me the lady that shouts under the anointing loud to the hearing of everyone the power of god is coming on a lady very loud bring her father i stretch my hands over your feet in the name of jesus the christ the son of the living god i pray for you I stretch my hands from the left to the right all across this auditorium and in the name of Jesus you are the people I prayed for yesterday my dear your wife lift your hands I know I prayed for you yesterday but there is a prophetic dimension God is bringing you into in the name of Jesus I declare over you take that fire now you will never be the same I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, the spirit of prophecy, the bowels of the spirit, that as many who are called into that dimension, right now in the name of Jesus, take that grace. I shift you by the spirit, step into those dimensions in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I place grace upon your life, the eyes that see and the ears that hear. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I declare the spirit of revelation, accurate understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, may your eyes be open to see. May your eyes be open to see. May your eyes be open to see. I declare anyone here under any yoke of darkness that is not of the Christ I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God every spirit that is foreign help that man I command that devil out of your life now out of your life now I speak to every closed door like your team says, every door that has refused to open. In the name of Jesus, I join my faith with the graces and the servants of God here. And we speak to those gates and doors, a father be opened. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm wrapping up. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible says, Peter was bound hand and feet. And prayer went on for his sake. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord came and the chains fell. And he passed through three gates. The first gate out of the prison. The second gate, he says he got to a gate called the iron gate. 
that opens to the city. There are gates that control influence. That when that gate is open, the next thing you see is the city. I declare over someone. My Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and caught the bars of iron in thunder. The gates that opens for your kingdom influence. I stand by the spirit of grace and I decree and declare, let it be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. That desire that you brought... We do not seek the Lord just because of things. However, in His presence there, there are tokens, consolations, proofs of His love, His power, and His majesty. I release my faith with you. That everything that you came with as a request, let it be turned now into a testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now please listen. Please listen. As... Dr. David Ogwele comes up, please, I want you to sit down and learn the doctrine and the ways of the kingdom. Refuse to be distracted, sit with all your heart, pay attention and hear the counsel of God. The truths of the kingdom are the keys that release the power of God. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4, he says, in that light that came out of his hands, there was the hiding place of his power. The power of God is found in his light. Are we together now? So please all together, thank you for all of this time, but I want you to settle down and let us listen so that we are sound in doctrine, we are built, we are matured in the things of the Spirit. For this is why he gave the gift that we are perfected, we are thoroughly built, that we are no more tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men. Are we together now? Pastor Jerry, thank you. And thank your lovely wife. I appreciate you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Please, can we be seated in the presence of God? I want to tell us one more time that a season has been breathed upon us. And um, please let's sit, protocol sit, everyone sit. Um, once again, I want to let us know that another move of God is about to be breathed one more time. Please can, can we say, God bless you, Apostle.
Thelma Nemac is the president of Eternity Network International, an interdenominational apostolic ministry which started out in Daria Kaduna State but is now based in the federal capital territory of Nigeria, Abuja. Motivated by his deep love for the body of Christ, Apostle Selman regularly teaches believers across various denominations with unusual insights into God's word and his ministrations are marked with awesome manifestations of God's power. He is the host of Koinonia, a weekly program that attracts thousands of people desiring to experience worship, word, miracles, love and true intimacy with the Holy Spirit deepening their fellowship with God and preparing them to fulfill their divine destiny. A mentor and father to many, Selman is fondly loved and regarded by thousands of young adults across the nation and beyond as the model and icon of the next generation. By default, there is no advantage anywhere for any man. You introduce systems of advantage into your destiny as you go. The first of them being salvation. It's like making do with whatever grows in a farm. And what grows in a farm without being planted is weed. So I come from a family, for instance, with no advantage. And now it is my responsibility under God to understand God and His ways and then introduce to my destiny systems of advantage that begin to correct errors that I met. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of the Lord. It's my joy to be here and I truly am honored to be in your city. Hallelujah. Please while standing help me appreciate Pastor Jerry and his wonderful wife. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And an amazing, amazing man of God and the wonderful things that he's doing. You know, while he was talking about me, I wish I had the chance to tell him, I hope you know that you are describing yourself to me. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Truly, I celebrate what God is doing in this city through this great vessel of God. The lives that have been changed, destinies transformed. I think we can honor him one more time. God bless you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. Father, tonight, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray that you will do mighty things in our midst. We have come with our hearts open. We have come with hunger. We have come to receive. We have come to be transformed. We have come to be imparted. We decree and declare tonight that there is the hearing of faith and also the working of miracles. Lord, I thank you because no life represented here, inside and outside, following online, will be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. You love prayer. Can we pray for a minute or two? Please lift your voice and pray in the Spirit. Oh, 
Kataka Parata Katusa de Palatus, the Kate Prandas Kate Palakata, Shekate Prasada Shalanda Pratus, the Kate Palada Palata Hoxi. Pacata Brandos, the Zeva Catala Hosiapa Zikete Pahuto Sopran Teke Palatosia. Let your spirit be open. Shanda Sabarato Sali Cata Branda Gata Barutia. Secreti Gedi Balataba Zikete Pacatus Kela Panda Sela. Sikete Pacata Branda Gadusiata. Shekete pekete palada balada boks. Sipari sebari ta shalatus kabadiata. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is king. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is here. I cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Shalibarakatosa prandega de paradusiata. Shileparuska de parutasia. Don't be tired, it's part of the meeting. Skimende shalentos kabaruta shabrakateka box. Shegeba katosa li branda katosa ketele kata. Shalabarata kata branda kata paruska bereketosiata. Shileparutasiata. Streams of joy. Abia state. Pray your way to a new dimension in the spirit. Let me prophesy upon your life. You will never be the same in grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Hallelujah. We are going to sit down shortly, but the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire resting. I'm seeing the number 34. Inside and outside, I stretch my hands. Please help anyone under the anointing. I stretch my hands. Here at this conference, the grace and the unction of the Spirit. Take that grace now. Please help them. Take that grace now. From the front to the back. Paris Koberekata. Shalepa Katos Kepata. Embrekete Parus Kobeto Shalepa. Iparatos Kia. All of the overflows. Drink of this fountain. Let it shift you to new dimensions in the Spirit. Please help this lady. Shalekatas kabarusete, embra kate 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 kate, shali baruntos kobariata. Sir, touch this man for me. Look at me. Lift your hands. There is an anointing coming on you. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands upon you. Take that grace now, in the name of Jesus Christ. I learned my faith with Pastor Jerry. God is doing something in this place tonight. I assure you that you will never be the same. Never be the same. Informer, informer, who is informer? I'm hearing a name, informer. The angel of the Lord is telling me she's in this room. Informer, is there someone like that? 
Your name is Ifoma. Where are you coming from, madam? Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You live here. For now, yes. No, no, no. Just, just take it easy, my dear. Please. Let's just let's be organized about this. I want to pray for you. My dear, look at me. This lady. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Take that grace now. You will never be the same. I cast that spirit out of your life forever. In the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Stand up. Here at this ministry, you will never forget this conference. I look at you and I see oppression around your life. And the Lord is saying, let it go now. I cast that spirit once and for all. Once I cast that spirit out of her destiny. Hear me. If there is anything that followed you here, I stand by the God of heaven, joining faith with your pastor under this apostolic and prophetic grace. I declare that 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 spirit must give way tonight. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Enough is enough. I speak and I declare that here upon this mountain, everything that does not represent the counsel of the Christ, here at Streams of Joy, we make decrees by the Spirit that it comes to an end. Don't be tired, you will soon be seated. Am, am I fine? Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring the lady that will shout now under the anointing. Loud to the hearing of everyone. Please, I want to talk to her. The power of God is coming on a lady now. Bring her. Take in the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace on the night. There's no need to cry, cause you're always with me. You're my father, my heir. Your language, sing it. Oh, man, my Shalabarus Kadibran, the Gediparatis, Shekete Baruda Siata Balakata. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah. The chant of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Madam, where are you coming from? Just, you are, I'm seeing, what do you have to do with Abuja? Give her a mic. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming Abuja. from? Abuja. Abuja. Yes, sir. The Lord is about to change your life. Amen. I don't know who Amen. you are, but thank God who ordered your step. Yes. I stretch my hands Amen. now. In the name of Jesus, fresh grace. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Taking the pain and the sorrow away, even the peace on the night. Ma, I want to pray for you. That no infirmity 
will stand your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Is it alright if I talk to you, man? I want to pray that the devil, please don't come out at random. Please. Please. There's no space here. I'll soon send a few people back so that we can teach. Ah, I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a serpent out of her destiny now. Out now. In the name of Jesus. Release her destiny. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Did the Bible not say blotting out every handwriting he says and every ordinance that spoke against us your bible declares that he nailed it to his cross hallelujah my mind the name of jesus christ i stand in faith with pastor jerry and we speak over your body the life the power of jesus christ destroys every trace and every planting of darkness over your body for the bible declares that every tree that has not been planted by my father that that tree will be uprooted we uproot it right now and forever in the name of jesus christ for all of you who are here for whatever reason i can't even remember why you are here again but in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the hand of god you will go back free you will go back with liberty in the name of jesus christ May the grace of God speak over your life. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please return back rejoicing. Hallelujah. You'll be seated shortly. Am I wasting your time? There is a pastor here. You came with such a hunger. I'm seeing an anointing of the Spirit resting upon you now. You are, I'm not saying you are going into ministry. You are in ministry. I don't know if it's this city. The Spirit of God, the hand of God will come upon that man. I just want to talk to him right now. You are a pastor in ministry. And when that anointing comes upon you, it will shift your ministry to a new level in the Spirit. Sir, are you husband and wife? Lift your hands, both of you. Hold your hands and lift it. Lift it. Look at me. I don't know two of you are, are, are they, they are pastors in this city. From Port Harcourt, you believe in the power of the anointing? I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. Take that grace. Two of you step into a new dimension of ministry. Signs, wonders, miracles by the Spirit of God. Taking the pain and the sorrow away Giving me peace, undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me Bless our hearts tonight, O oh God Please sit down if you can My dear, you are a member of this church? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what you do. But two things are going to happen to you. Number one, there is a multiplication of the grace for the prophetic. This is what I'm seeing by the spirit. And number two, the unction for favor is coming upon you. I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace. Step into that season. Step into that level. I take away limitations from your destiny by the spirit of grace. Can I tell you this? Happy are you when you find the grace sent to you. Not the grace available. The grace sent to you. There are words that are spoken, but there are words that are sent. It's such an honor to be part of this great assembly. Many of you may not know the kinds of transactions that are happening in the realm of the spirit. It is what is upon you that controls what is around you. What is around you is merely a report card. It's speaking to you and telling you what is upon you. 
So whilst we explore the word just for a few minutes, our time is already gone. I'll respect the time just to touch on something tonight and then we'll pray. But I like for your heart to be sensitive because whilst the word of God is coming forth, the spirit of God is hovering like he always does within this auditorium and then even outside of this auditorium to all the overflows and our family watching online globally just open up your heart to receive there are impartations you see before you receive from a grace study it study the operation and the dynamics of the spirit connected to that grace so that you can maximize it if you come to a church like this you study the operation of God's working in your pastor that will help you to know how to receive praise the name of the Lord so let hope rise darkness trembles in your own healer Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy night. Listen to me. Ephesians chapter 3. Pastor, when Paul began to teach the church in Ephesus, part of his apostolic ministry, helping to mentor and to build the church. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul began to speak about the basis of his ability to communicate spiritual things. And Paul began to speak to the people to say how that it was by revelation he was granted access to what he calls the fellowship of the mystery. Like occultism, as though you were initiated to be a partaker of a body of spiritual truth and he said among the many graces that were given to him there was a strange one found in verse 9 verse 9 says there is a grace that can make all men see it's a grace that supplies spiritual illumination and compels you to comprehend spiritual things regardless your intellectual limitations is an unction because you see when we're dealing with spiritual things we are not just dealing with matters of intellect uh -uh. it is a realm that flesh and blood cannot comprehend he told peter flesh and blood has not revealed this so that dimension of revelation is higher than the realm that flesh and blood reveals are we together now yes so he says to make all men see that whilst you are in an atmosphere like this suddenly the truths of scripture begin to open up to you and your eyes your 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 mind begins to comprehend these truths because in this kingdom it is as far as your eyes can see it says lift up your eyes from where thou art as far as your eyes can see then it is given unto you so can we look to the word of God for a minute or two? I have a number of things that I desire to share. My assignment by the grace of God is that every time God grants me the privilege to go to a territory, my assignment basically is by the spirit of grace to stand and support that which God is doing through the vessels within that territory and to do that by helping to supply dimensions of spiritual reality that can help strengthen the body of Christ within that territory because you see a true apostolic grace is not a ministerial grace it is an administrative grace a true apostolic grace is mandated with the responsibility of coordinating the spiritual activities within a dispensation that means that by the election of grace you are granted the privilege 
to see to it that the body of spiritual knowledge allocated for a generation is effectively dispensed so god supplies all of the spiritual arsenals that need to back you so that you are efficient in supplying those dimensions and it is an honor an honor to be granted this privilege and this grace by god to be a contributor a strengthener a lifter of the hands of men in the body hallelujah praise the name of the lord so let's discuss a few things i want to teach very briefly wherever we stop tonight we'll pray on spiritual patterns please pay attention to this teaching i believe by the grace of god that in addition to that which your pastor has labored and continues to labor communicating to you so that you are strengthened that this truth alongside all the servants of god who have come and will be coming that together as a coordinated army that god will supply something in this conference that will shift you in reality to the next dimension one thing i must commend about this church sir is that you are a passionate people who are full of faith the faith of god is palpable within this assembly it is true that you believe what you say hallelujah praise the name of the lord jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 when we have it projected and you can see it please read ready read thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find listen 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 don't rush the bible shows us here that for the believer there is a relationship between asking walking and rest that the pathway to rest starts when you ask then when you are shown you obtain grace to walk in that path and then you will find rest are we together now now all across the globe there are men and women who continue to press towards spiritual things in hope that they will be able to find the principles of the kingdom that are responsible for the various outcomes that we desire all over the world pastor from the u.s to asia to europe to africa men and women continue to search for the keys that control the various dimensions of possibilities in the kingdom for others they seek to know the dynamics that is responsible for the miraculous for others they want to search for the principles that control the blessing of the lord upon the life of a believer in reality for others they seek to find out the keys that are responsible for influence and access like you so greatly prophesied where kings agree that you are king over them the bible says several men came to david in the cave of adulam and that they said that they submitted himself to be king over them are we together now as you might have heard me say this kingdom that we are part of is a compendium of infinite possibilities you have to agree on this are we together now that the possibilities that are in this kingdom are as vast as god himself and that means that in the entire span of a believer's journey whatever you are able to capture throughout your lifetime becomes your the frame of your understanding of who god is and how far he's able to take you are we together now and that the theology that your life will write will be based on your perspective about god and so all through history we've had people come up with different ideas about who god is and the pathway that makes for victory in the kingdom others as a result of their prolonged frustrations have found ways 
to shut down certain names of God because of their experiences. They have lived long on the earth and have not been able to capture certain dimensions of God. And so to them, those dimensions no longer exist. It is dangerous to teach from the frame of your limitation. The Bible says in Acts chapter 18 that there was a man called Apollos. The Bible says he was a mighty man who was fervent in scripture. The kind of man every pastor will be looking for. The Bible says, but he knew only the baptism of John. One day he came for a conference like this and believed he was impressing everybody. And yet there were two strange people who sat in that congregation called Aquila and Priscilla. While they listened to him vent out his limitation, they appreciated his passion. But the Bible says after that service, they held him and expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. So if Apollos had written an epistle, you would be misled passionately reading the, reading the limitation of a man. You see, let me tell you this. One of the challenges with the body of Christ, and I say this respectfully, is that many times limitations and create doctrines out of them. And we mentor people from the vista of our limitation. And from one generation to one gen another generation, we begin to close the gap. Or we begin to close the opportunity for God to manifest His vastness. So if I never experience favor in my life, everyone who is mentored by me will be mentored to disregard that reality. If I do not experience speed in my life, I, I convert my pain to a theology. And now I teach it so that whoever should have, should release his faith for more of God, now is compelled as a proof of his loyalty to my ideology. He now sabotages an opportunity to step into the fullness of God I hope you understand what I'm saying this is not a call to sarcasm this is a believers conference we are challenging ourselves to say there is more in God oh yes there is more brothers and sisters once again let's become students of history there is more in God time will fail me Hebrew says to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions I came to shake your faith and shake your convictions and tear that limitation to let you know that this God you see is more than the frame of our experiences and we must tell him maranatha come more of you the fullness of your counsel when i pray for 100 people and only two people are healed i turn my embarrassment into a theology rather than using it as a drive to press for deeper dimensions knowing that god is true and only men are liars i would turn my embarrassment and say the person who did not get healed i find a very intelligent theological reason and everybody who watches me they will frame their lives after my limitation let me tell you sincerely, this God that we serve, we are yet to scratch a bit of the, the vastness of the power, the grace, the possibilities that are in Christ. And I believe in the name of Jesus that in our lifetime, that we are hungry and desperate and unashamed enough to push to these dimensions that once again we will sign a signature in this generation that there were men and women who knew God and proved their knowledge of him through the exploits and the impact the Bible says but the people that do know their God They shall be strong, capacity, and then they will do exploits. Please sit down. Are we blessed? So we must establish that fact. Is there stand 
in the ways and see as for the old path the old path is not the path of a denomination no the old path is you see god let me tell you how god works every time he's about to introduce himself in a new way he simulates some pattern around it for continuity are we together so that whoever wants to experience that dimension of god will have to learn the pattern he created so for instance when he was going to introduce because until adam came there was no idea of expansion through reproduction it was only creation this is what confused the devil all of a sudden he sees a woman's stomach protruding and then another man comes out of it and say what is this every time god wanted to expand he would create but he invented the formula of reproduction through adam and eve that was why satan looked for cain <laughs> that was the first man who was the product of reproduction cain that meant satan was seeing a formula god had put in man now that the womb of a woman can now make many more men he didn't know that the woman's womb could get pregnant again he thought cain was the only one so he came to him <laughs> now we're not please sit down sit down sit down this is not we're not this is not where i'm going at all just just help me support my focus are we together <laughs> every time you want a baby you subscribe to the pattern that was created is that true salvation when jesus came he didn't just save man do you know as powerful as god was and is he did not cast sin out of men he didn't stand to say i god yahweh i use my might as the creator of the heavens and the earth and i cast sin out of men because he had created a pattern the pattern says without the shedding of blood it is illegal to remit sins it's a pattern number two there is a pattern that says the wages of sin is death now when god came to the earth he himself had to submit to those patterns now listen carefully yeah. spiritual patterns hold the key to the exploits of the saints in this kingdom it takes more than a good desire it takes more than a kind well-meaning heart brothers and sisters hear me there are many well-meaning people well-meaning preachers the exploits that your pastor is having today is not just because he's a good man as wonderful as he is and his dear wife i can tell you that he has found like a spiritual archaeologist spiritual patterns these are the patterns that secure the glory of god so there is a pattern that is responsible for administering salvation are we together now you do not think salvation and then you are saved no that's not the pattern for it the pattern that administers salvation as we know new birth is found in romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10 is that true the bible says the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart the word of faith which we preach that if you will confess that's the pattern with your mouth the lord jesus believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead salvation is administered to you the formula is in the next verse it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth salvation is i mean confession is made unto salvation so it is a pattern anybody who does not subscribe to that pattern is not saved it's as honest and sincere and simple as that there are spiritual patterns that are responsible for releasing and activating the blessing of the lord upon the believer patterns that relate to giving for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty it's not an information it's a pattern 
another spiritual pattern that supports your longevity is he who does not walk should not eat it's an advice that if you plan to be lazy forget about food because eating without walking will kill you this is a medical advice these are spiritual patterns so part of the ways you choose life is that anytime you see a plate of food in front of you ask yourself what work is this food going to support this is how to live long it's an advice are we together there is a pattern that is responsible for renewal the bible says has thou not heard seen has thou not heard the everlasting god the lord are we together that he is not weary he does not faint then the bible says even the young men will faint and the youth will be weary he says but they that wait is a pattern it's not just an information that that it is human to be weary the wear and tear the vicissitudes of life can beat down your focus your zeal and your power incorporate this pattern to your spiritual work and you will run and not be weary you will walk and not faint so every time you are weary and you are fainting that is an information that your pain is telling you you are violating a spiritual pattern hmm. the bible says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy are we together now so he gave you a pattern that encapsulates Satan's work. So for you to verify whether it is the devil search for these things, is there stealing in it? Is there killing in it? Is there destruction in it? The moment you see it, you know that that is a pattern. There is also a pattern that shows you when the kingdom of God shows up in a place. It says the kingdom of God encapsulates these tripartite factors, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. This is a prophetic compendium of patterns, roadmaps that lead to mysterious outcomes. These are the principles that turn ordinary people to signs and wonders. That we reign and we rule in this kingdom on the strength of the patterns we have found. Our possibilities are not defined by the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. They are predicated upon our comprehending the spiritual patterns. So two people loved by God can be in Abia state. Since they are believers, but their possibilities can be east and west. It's not a measure of the love of God for them. It is a measure of how far they have been able to discover the patterns that are responsible for the outcomes they desire. This is a very powerful revelation. The name given to this revelation is Jesus the way. Jesus did not say I am life alone. He said I am the way. The methodology of the kingdom. Is God speaking to someone? Several people desire the anointing. But there are spiritual patterns that control and govern both the reception and the administration of the anointing. You see, mastery makes difficult things look easy. But behind them is a, is a diligent study of their operations. Please hear me, saints of God. The quality of my life and your life in this kingdom will depend on how much we are willing to obtain grace from God and become students in the school of the Spirit to search for the patterns not just to desire the outcome that those patterns produce to search for it this church is growing and increasing and making impact at a global scale because there is a pattern I assure you there is a pattern there is nobody sincerely who commands certain degrees of exploit who does not know what he is doing 
It's just that the, the awareness of the mercy of God will make you just say, look, it's the all glory to God. But the truth is, where you probe deeply, they will sincerely tell you, I am what I am by the grace of God. But this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. There is a labor dimension of faith that helps you to birth certain spiritual patterns. Now my question very briefly before we pray is which spiritual pattern do you not know? Leave the one you know. Could it be that my life and your life you will say so there is a relationship between your words and your victory it's a pattern it says let the redeemed of the lord he already called them the redeemed but he says say so because everything starts from the realm of the spirit but will require authorization from the saints to be manifest it is always the spirit and the bride that says come so when the spirit says come he's waiting for the bride on earth to also say come when the spirit says lifted the bride must also say lifted it is the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come it's a pattern forever oh lord your word is settled not in your life in heaven it tells you the location where the word is settled it will take faith and engaging these patterns for it to become a reality in your life Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. There is a spiritual pattern responsible for speed. The Bible says, Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab, even down to Jezreel. That means there is something you can engage in the spirit that will release a supply of that grace and your results become, from a human standpoint, it will look as if you held a charm. Can I tell you this? Now please listen very carefully. Every dimension of results you see, listen carefully whether it came from a man of God or God as you call it or it came from a herbalist or it came from diviners are we together now if you ever see any result that is superhuman it was a manipulation of spiritual laws there is only one force and one power once have I spoken and twice that how many oh. if it ever works is because the power of God not necessarily God was involved in that process if God is not involved in that process it does not work and without him was not anything made including the result of a hidden without him was not anything made that was made but this is let me explain to you why it seems to happen even without their loyalty to God there are three dimensions of accessing the power of God in this kingdom maybe I'll wrap up with it tonight number one is the dimension of God's power and grace that comes through encounters direct encounters with God when you have a solid encounter with the God of the Bible there is a dimension of power that is given to you as a token as a reward for your press for meeting him now the highest level of spiritual power that can be given to a man comes through that platform please listen carefully are we together now that when a man so presses beyond all the distractions and eventually you are able to touch the heart of God in a way that causes him to reveal himself to you the law is found in Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 and you shall seek me he says and find me when you search for me with all your heart that means if you don't find me the diagnosis is that something in your heart is not seeking for me the jealousy of god mandates that all of you is directed towards him for you to really find him are we together yes sir so encounters what is an encounter an experience that makes god real an experience generally speaking 
that furnishes the reality of whether a person, an idea, whatever it is to you. When you have, it doesn't have to be a visionary in, in a visionary way. But the assignment of an encounter is to create conviction. Without encounters, the saints will not have conviction. But I know whom I have believed. Not just that I believe him, I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded. It is on the strength of encounters that the apostle can say, What shall separate us from the love of God? It's not a memory verse, it's a product of an encounter. Please listen to me. You must trust God for the grace to press to. When one encounter with God will answer many prayer points at once. There are many, many kinds of prayers you will not pray again when you really have an encounter. One of my dear people will always say that when you have these encounters, it will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life. Everybody say encounters. You must desire encounters with all your heart. There are certain dimensions of anointings. For a generation, no, it will come through encounters. And can I tell you this? Sincerely, when it comes, it has come. It will be clear that the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. If you are still doubting and hoping it's there or it's not, it's, then it means it's not there. Number two, very quickly, the second platform that affords us the opportunity to receive the unction and the possibilities to demonstrate the might of God in this kingdom is the mysteries or the principles of the kingdom, such as what I'm teaching you now. There is a dimension of the power of God invested in these principles. You don't have to believe Him to access it. You just, it is controlled by knowledge and understanding, not intimacy. You don't, intimacy is not a condition to receive power at that level. It is knowledge and understanding. So I can ignore the God of the Bible and through the humility and meekness I can learn from people who have found these patterns they may not admit the God who delivered it like the secular the business principles they used to excel the leadership principles these are all principles if it ever works is because there is God in that equation now they may not desire an encounter with that God but understanding has brought them to a point where they are able to walk those principles and there is a dimension of his power invested in principles if God forbid not to play with your mind but if a terrorist decides to sow in rainy season the soil, the earth will not refuse to produce because there is a pattern the power of God has already been in, it's already invested in that are, are we together now? yes someone can be insulting God and still have a child after 9 months because there is a pattern are we together now? Someone will insult God before he goes to bed and wake up in the morning and keep insulting again because there is a pattern. It is the second level. The key to receiving at that level is not intimacy. The key to receiving at that level is understanding. Are we together? The third platform is called covenant alignment let me explain it the third platform for receiving power in this kingdom is called covenant alignment please say covenant alignment and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you have to round up listen look at me do you know the way God advances his kingdom pastor 
is that when God wants to introduce a dimension of his possibilities to a generation he finds a man everybody say a man not men he finds a man and enters a personal covenant with that man through the sacrifice of alignment he enters a personal covenant with that man are we together now that covenant becomes the legitimate authorization for God to reveal that dimension of him in the earth and for as long as that man is alive any other person who must host that dimension of God must be able to do it in alignment to God and that system he has created I pray that your eyes will be open to what I'm sharing with you hmm. so there are men who are carrying anointings there are men who are carrying mantles but there are men who are spiritual systems don't be carried away by the body you are looking at and it is not everybody but this is true read your bible and you will see that there are men it was not mantles they carried abraham did not carry mantles abraham was a spiritual system that was referred to in isaiah 51 that if you want to study what it means to be blessed in the kingdom look unto abraham your father and to sarah that bore you i called him and blessed him and increased him abraham is my recommended portrait for the blessing you ever ignore that reality if you like serve God as much as you want he will refer you back to that pattern pattern number two system number two Jacob Jacob is God's biblical pattern for encounters that every time you want to encounter God the individual that embodies that revelation is Jacob Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell therein when you read on it says this is the generation that seek thy face O Jacob or O God of Jacob until Jacob had an encounter there was no God of Jacob it was God of Abraham and God of Isaac in Genesis 28 Jacob lay in the night to sleep in a place called Luz that will later be changed to Bethel are we together now and the Bible says when he lay down to sleep suddenly he saw a ladder that connected the earth and heaven is it in your Bible I hope you know they were not parables these were things that actually happened and he saw angels ascending and descending and at the top of it was God are we together now and he began to speak to him and the Bible says he got up and said the Lord was in this place and I knew not the Bible is not ashamed to leave Jacob's mistake for us to learn that Jacob made a clear mistake he admitted with all humility that I missed this opportunity for an encounter the next thing that will happen in Jacob's life he was too innocent for an encounter the next episode of his life will be his pain in the house of Laban after defrauding him after wasting his time god said let's try again now genesis 32 jacob dismissed his wives jacob dismissed his animals when he was alone god said let me see if you can get it this time around then came a man in the night listen carefully jacob held him and he said i missed it the first time i have learned through my pain the value of your presence i have learned through my pain listen carefully he said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless now watch this let me show you how the god of jacob was being formed that god captured that experience and added his name on it and said you can study the god of jacob by studying jacob are we blessed these men were not carrying mantles they were spiritual systems the dimension of god committed to them is still valid today and 
and then he said what is your name that means everything that has to do with a true encounter must affect your identity must affect your office must affect your authority because it's a name is a dimension of identification a name can represent a limitation like jabez are we together what is your name and he says jacob he says thou shalt no more be called jacob for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie that means the condition for a genuine encounter is that something must be in your life that makes you incomplete without god jacob if you want an encounter i must do something to you that leaves you permanently deficient without me so I become the completer of your life. Then the Bible says he blessed him. And the sun arose. And he called that place Peniel. The face of God. For I have seen God face to face and my life is spared. And God said, Jacob, congratulations. You, you did not just qualify for an experience. You have become a spiritual system to model how men can find God. Another... Another spiritual system was this mystery. This mystery system disguised in a body we call Elijah. The first manifestation of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, was not in the man Elijah. The first manifestation of that mystery was in a man called Noah. <laughs> Goodness, my God, my God, my God. You see, Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns revival. It's an apostolic and a prophetic system. It has nothing to do with a man. Every time God is about to come, Elijah must precede him. It's a pattern. So before the flood and the judgment, that spirit came in a man called Noah. Then when Jezebel and the prophets of Baal were persecuting the people of God, that system came again, embodied now in a man called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? When Elijah died, the pattern still remained. When I say died, you know what I mean. Now exited his duty here. Elijah returns back in a man who was found in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey. Is it in your Bible? He was no longer called Elijah. He was called John the prophet. He was not the Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to help him find Jesus. But Elijah was a prophet. Are we together now? Suddenly a man shows up. A spiritual system. So Satan studied that system and started his own tomb. The first of that system was Cain. And Cain built a city and named him after his child. And then we now see that there was another spiritual system called Nimrod Kush. Theologically speaking, he killed his father and married his mother. Samiramai. That's how he became Nimrod Kush. He, he manipulated a pattern that gave him so much influence and they wanted to build a city whose top would reach the heavens. And God knew they were going to do it. He had to be the one to come and scatter it. Are we together? Then we see another spiritual pattern represented in a she goddess called Jezebel. That Jezebel is not just a woman. Are we together now? Delilah is not just a woman. Delilah is a spiritual pattern that represents seduction. A spiritual system that destroys great men and great things. That if you want to study how the great fall, it is represented in this evil communication you call Delilah. It's not a woman. The spirit that was on Delilah can come on a man. 
and it will be it will it is it is destruction through seduction that's how the pattern operates for Jezebel is a spirit that attacks influence by partnering with government every time Jezebel shows up she cannot be activated until she's in partnership with government so whether it's Herodias or Jezebel herself with Ahab the, when Jezebel comes it targets influence are we together Elijah also represents not just the prophetic and the apostolic but the spirit that births revivals within a territory Elijah was recommended as a case study when Apostle James was teaching people about prayer are we together he used an example he said Elijah was a man of like passion that means when you want to use prayer to change the spiritual climate of a territory study Elijah Elijah shot a territory for three and a half years I hope you know Elijah was not the only one who knew God there were other prophets remember under the custody of Obadiah don't you think one of them would have prophesied and said God forget about this man let me tell you this God honors these systems let me give you one more of this system this mysterious man called Samuel Samuel was not just a prophet Samuel was a mysterious man whose word never fell to the ground God had rejected Saul as king and was ready to lift David Samuel refused and David's destiny was in trouble because one man you thought God would bypass him God had to come and explain to him and say Samuel how long will you weep seeing that I've rejected please carry the horn Moses was a spiritual pattern look at this Moses is a man who is a stammerer and yet part of his spirit comes on 70 elders and they prophesied they could not keep quiet and yet that was what was in one man and he was moving every day the a part of the spirit in one man came on people who were elders with all their training they prophesied from morning till night it was this mistake that costed Saul his throne he thought men were just men and he said look the, the pressure was coming on him to offer the sack he said we can't wait for Samuel and when he finished Samuel came and said no you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and God would have established your throne forever now you have done this the kingdom is taken away from you this is not human worship I am showing you that the results we command in this kingdom are mysteriously tied I'm teaching you covenant alignment I think that's how we got here please spare me just a few minutes and we're done that means on earth today with all humility the spiritual system that represents faith is Kenneth Copeland as old as he looks and he may share something you may think is not Rema but he is an embodiment of a spiritual system by covenant that's why God will have to keep him long enough to make sure that that territory gets that grace before he transits. Are we together now? Reinhard Bonke was a spiritual system that represented the evangelistic. You will never work at a global scale ignoring that personality. This is not human worship. I'm showing you the third way to receive no matter how much you press into God he will refer you back to his system Benny Hinn today represents the healing ministry and that came from Oral Roberts this, these things are not it's not an invention when that person who is the system dies God will find another person and enter a covenant that represents continuity John the Baptist was not just a prophet when Jesus came to the earth if Jesus ignored John the Baptist he would have been surprised even though he was the son of the living God 
for 30 years your Jesus walked under a closed heaven your Jesus read your Bible as the son of the living God yet his heavens were not open until he had to look for the system Jesus John did not listen when John was in the wilderness a formula was given to him that whoever you baptize and you see the heavens open that is the lamb so John would pour water and say no go John would pour water and say no go pour water then he looks at a 30 year old young man come in and says behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and Jesus said no suffer it to be so that all scripture this is a pattern that not even me will violate John said I am not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe Jesus said you are right but I am on earth now I must submit to that pattern And then the Bible says, John held Jesus, dipped him in water, brought him out. What does your Bible say? And the heavens opened. And then God now spoke and said, this is my beloved son. Question, what was he before? And then listen, he said, this is my beloved son. Who has visited your crusade? No, in whom I am well pleased. He said, as a result of this submission, hear ye him. Everywhere Jesus went, they could not resist his ministry because there was a hear ye him anointing. There is a grace. Do you believe what I'm saying? Now I know here and there you will always find exaggerations where people will use this to manipulate people but let me tell you this we can do nothing against the truth or the truth but for the truth this ministry you see there is a dimension of God's grace that has been committed to your pastor are we together now for as long as you do not discern and tap into it through honor through meekness and through alignment there are certain dimensions of grace that will never be reproduced in your life believe me when i tell you this saul who later became paul encountered jesus christ after he encountered jesus christ you would think that's the end jesus now referred him back after an encounter he said go and wait somebody in the body will come and continue that thing to you jesus referred him back why will you need someone else when you've met jesus he still referred him back when you honor men it is not human worship when it is done within the jurisdiction of scripture you are discerning that there is a dimension of the investment of god upon this man otherwise certain results will not be possible listen there are results that are bigger than your personal spiritual life it is an elevation that the election of grace has taken you to are we together yes while it is true that many times we men of God would like to tell you everything you see is a perfect reflection of our spiritual lives. It may not be entirely true. There are dimensions of this elevation that is purely an election of grace. And it is because of what God is doing and his program. So encounters, mysteries, covenant alignment. There are many people who came under certain mysterious graces that never beg. Even before they started knowing the principles of finance, they started increasing. They didn't even know why. They were not keeping the principles at all. But because, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may bless him for Jonathan's sake, not for his sake? There are people who came under certain graces 
and their prayer lives entered certain dimensions before they themselves decided to be serious with prayer. The same way you are joined to certain friends and without your intention you begin to become maybe a wayward person. You see that now. It's more than an information. It's not just what they told you. There was a transference of spirits too. Please listen to me. I know that our time is gone. What would take even if it's two or three minutes to pray. My charge to you tonight is that scattered in this scripture are the spiritual patterns that are responsible for the dominion of the saints. Now we can argue it. Some of you may disbelieve it. But the truth remains the truth. Nobody rises by mistake in this kingdom. No. We engage these mysteries through light. It's an ancient part. We didn't invent it. We only discovered it. That when you find that part. You begin to rise. In a way as though the devil does not exist. And I believe the burden that is on the heart of your pastor and his dear wife is to see that not only this precious assembly, but that the entire city and indeed the entire eastern region, that you come into a greater comprehension of these spiritual patterns. There is something you can introduce to your business that will make people ask you, do you know? If, if you see a gentleman today who maybe is just struggling or managing his life, let's assume by next week, you suddenly find out that he becomes a multi-millionaire. In all honesty, you will not ask him, what did you do? You will say, where did you go to? This kind of result is not about what you have done again. Where, just be honest, I will keep it it's between me and you. What, where did you go to? Because there are some results that, are, that respond with the sequence of economy. But there are others, this one is the finger of God. The Bible says if it is the Lord's doing, it must be marvelous. I'm saying this because there are extraordinary results that many of you will begin to produce from this night. Believe me. Results that will dumbfound principalities and powers. That some of you will return back home. And all of a sudden you will see that your prayer life... It's, it's as though something rested upon you. Some of you will find out that you will open your Bible and there is a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. It's as though you've never read your Bible again. Transference of spiritual possibilities. For some of you, you will find out that the book of remembrance is open over you. The Bible says, and that night the king could not sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And they opened. There were many people who did good, but his eyes went to Mordecai. And said, what shall be done to such a man? There are some of you, the pattern that you will see is what will activate favor. Exodus 3.21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of this. You are looking at your family. I'd like you to look in one minute and just say, wow. So if my father had known this, if my sincere missionary parents, as well-meaning as they were, if they only knew that there was a pattern that, prov that provides speed, that there is a pattern that can veto causes and yokes, regardless the speakings of darkness, and bring a man to a position of power in the spirit. Are you ready to pray? Just for one minute, our time is up. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry seriously. Lord, I'm ready to shift to a higher dimension spiritually. Open my eyes to the mysteries and the patterns that empower my next dimension. Someone is praying. I release my faith with your pastor. 
so that you will produce real results. For some of you, you need a multiplication of unction. The current level of grace that you carry cannot produce the results you desire. Just for a minute, lift your voice and pray. Some of you here are pastors. You are trusting God for numerical increase. I assure you there is a pattern. There is a spiritual pattern responsible for growth, responsible for increase. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. There's more that's found in you And we will never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you And we will never settle for less When we know Hallelujah. Please look up. Let me just encourage you. I'm sure that your pastor will come. We may not have the time to minister to the sick. I'd like you to come with your heart open tomorrow and trust God. Among the many things that I believe that God will be doing tomorrow is transference of graces. Graces are transferable. There is no one, it is never God's intention that a dimension of possibility resides and remains only with one person. Whenever he sends a word to Jacob, it's because he intends for it to reach Israel. So come with your heart opened. You are in ministry, you are trusting God to really shift you. Some of you have prayer groups. Some of you, you discern that there are graces that God is giving you, that you are part of the prophetic program of God within the east of the Niger. Please come with your heart opened. Some of you are trusting God for a release or a higher release of certain dimensions of grace, discernment, the prophetic. Come with your heart open. Hallelujah. And I pray for you tonight, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. Let there be angelic activities on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release all kinds of breakthroughs tonight. We command all kinds of possibilities tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that as a result of this encounter, may your hunger for spiritual things multiply. In the name of Jesus, may your appetite for the things of the Spirit be enlarged. May your passion for God be increased in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. While we remain standing, can we just raise our two hands and just speak in the Holy Ghost? Can we just be very, very intentional about speaking in the Holy Ghost? Can we just speak in the Holy Ghost? Can we speak in the Holy Ghost? Praise the Lord. This is our final session tonight, and um, I, 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 I wished, I wish Pastor Dele just continued. I mean, this man was just nailing these things. <sighs> lift your hands, lift your voices in one minute, and let's just ask the Lord to grant us the grace for revelation tonight. Go ahead and pray all who are following from around the world. Make sure you pray in one minute. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever I will trust in you. 
Are you praying? I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong. Ask the Lord for the spirit of revelation afresh again. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. We do the things that we do and just like Pastor Dele shared here, this is all about the purposes of the kingdom. I think it's important that we continue to emphasize this. This is not about fame. This is not about um, just honoring a conference. This is about a sincere desire to be active contributors to kingdom come. Someday if Christ tarries, whether we like it or not, there will be a transition. And we will hand over these truths to a generation. And so, our assignment is to be diligent. Many ran with this baton and they gave it to us faithfully. Now, many of us had the gods to criticize them and now we are the ones at the stage here. We have to trust God for grace to run sincerely. To run with perseverance, the Bible says, the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. Before we sit, let me just, I promise that we'll, I will just recommend a few books. Is, am, I, am I okay? Um, there are so many books that are available for the growth of the believer, but um, I just thought to bring two or three. Number one, Apostles, Prophets, and the Coming Moves of God. Apostles, Prophets, and the Coming Moves of God by Dr. Bill Hammond. One of the last of these veterans of the gospel standing. Our fathers are transiting with such speed. In the last one year, these men and women of God uh, have joined the cloud of witnesses. This is a call for greater tenacity even as we we get to the end of the age apostles prophets and the coming moves of god dr bill hammer number two fasting and prayer the atomic power with god this was the book that birthed the pentecostal charismatic movement reverend franklin hall it was a book that i was introduced to by pastor david Ubueli very powerful book i read it in one sitting fasting and prayer the atomic power with god reverend franklin hall next also on fasting the key to releasing god's power in your life this is by Derek prince i'm not really talking about fasting this night just i just thought that is needed and then this one i had to this is my copy sadly but by the grace of god um they saw it all this is by gordon lindsay many of you know about gordon lindsay christ for the nations now the way he started ministry is very interesting he spent a major part of his life supporting other ministries and other um, mission works all across the globe so he had a very rich heritage of vast experience across several ministries before he started Christ for the Nations they saw it happen this is a dramatic story of those who were greatly used in the Pentecostal outpouring of the 21st century the 20th century Gordon Lindsay I'm sure that there will be a way of getting these books, making them available. The Bible says, buy the truth. When oil was finished, he said, go to them that sell. There are people apportioned with the grace to sell.
buy the truth sell it not praise the name of the lord so let's do well to get these books um personally because i was greatly mentored by dr miles monroe i would recommend any of his books on the kingdom he has provided one of the most balanced approach to kingdom living and understanding the kingdom from rediscovering the kingdom and um, so on and so forth so his concepts are very very powerful and then there are so many i i don't want to now just begin to mention names but at least it's important that we get some of these books and then revive the culture of study revive in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty the culture of study i think respectfully speaking maybe that may be my first charge before we sit down um i say this with every sense of passion and every sense of responsibility something is gradually happening to our our desire to study the bible or our faith work is not just a spiritual work alone our minds must be actively involved in kingdom come it's a study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needs not to be ashamed he says rightly dividing the word hallelujah the assignment of the god of this world according to scripture is to blind their minds not just their eyes ephesians 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them hallelujah it's very very important we must trust god for grace to be students of scripture father be glorified tonight again in the name of jesus christ please be seated god bless you pastor Dele again thank you it's an honor it's an honor thank you thank you so let's look at our, our course curriculum again we started yesterday by considering the assignment i pray and i hope that i was able to touch it um, enough to inspire our hunger to look at the mandate the ecclesia understanding what our corporate mandate is to reveal jesus and to bring glory to glorify the same and then this morning we looked at doctrine please in the name of jesus study on this doctrine doctrine um will remain the hope of our remaining in the patterns of god like pastor Dele shared we cannot begin to invent pathways arbitrarily even though paul saw jesus jesus still referred him back to the church for his growth and his development so his encounter with jesus did not stop him from going to learn he still spent many years about 18 19 in the wilderness of arabia are we together and so we'll look very briefly at the coming move of god it's a prophetic teaching it will be very brief i may not be as vast as i would have wanted to be but then i want us to find somewhere to pray the coming move of god ladies and gentlemen let me sound an alarm that has not been sounded for a very long time jesus is coming let's start like that this night you will be surprised that what i'm saying should not be strange in the body of christ can you shout it with me say jesus is coming i assure you this is true many people do not believe that this is um this is a reality that will happen again why because of the time lag this is a statement that was said by many people they served the lord they went to be with the lord and all kinds of doctrines as it were are beginning to come up to say no i don't think that's exactly what the bible meant one of the pillars remember our teaching in the morning for those of you who were part of it 
we have certain foundational pillars that make the Christian faith. No matter where and what we agree or disagree on, we cannot compromise on these pillars. One of it is the reality of the soon coming king. Jesus Christ is coming back again. Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 to 11. Let's look through scripture. Acts chapter 1 from verse 9. If it's coming back, you are not a Christian. Hallelujah. After telling them they would receive power, they would be witnesses. The Bible says when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. This was not a parable. This actually happened. Are we together? Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men by them in white apparel, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, and by extension the entire creation, because what he says to one, he says to all, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Please read the remaining part if you are a Christian. One to read. This same Jesus, not another one, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This is the integrity of scripture that Jesus will return again in the similitude, the way he left. How did he leave? In the presence the people saw him. That means he will return back and he will be seen. Do we agree on this? Scripture number 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. This, this was um, Paul. He was teaching to encourage the brethren particularly over the brethren who passed on to glory. We call it dying. Now Paul calls it sleeping. Are we together? Let's consider that scripture 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. It says for if we believe that Jesus are you seeing now? He now introduces one of the foundational pillars of the Christian faith as the basis of encouraging the bereaved. He does not bring opinions. Oh, I think you'll be comforted. Things will be all right. He said, no, 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 no. There is something. There is a foundational truth. There is a pillar that should support your confidence. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, also, them which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, hallelujah, that unto there is an event called the coming of the Lord. It says, shall not prevent them which are asleep, 16 now. It says, for the Lord himself, Paul, this man, eh, that Paul, honestly, when we get to heaven, we really need to sit with him. Because Paul had strange encounters. He was not actively part of the disciples of Jesus. But the basis of his apostolic authority is something that is worth commending. The ability to have captured these things. As though he walked with Jesus, walked with the disciples. Back to that scripture please. For the Lord himself, this is how it will happen. Shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God And in this sequence The dead in Christ My grandfather in Christ Who served and preached Until he went to be with the Lord The Bible gives me a consolation That is non-emotional According to the integrity of God's word That a day will come In the program of earth When the trump Now truly if you understand this It will encourage you Imagine the wonderful people, some have been martyred, some have gone, and this, this atmosphere of despair, suddenly you resort back to a doctrine that gives you strength and stamina. That Jesus 
will return and he's not just returning to prove his king he's already king of kings and lord of lords his resurrection already settled that are we together please give us that scripture again it says for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first not alone first that honor will be given to them and then we when paul was saying it and they thought it would be so soon so he said we but he did not make that that <laughs> are we together now i will show you why a lot of people doubt the reality of the coming of christ because that expectation the bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary almost every move of god has come with advocates who said he's coming he's coming soon and that soon just fades away and people turn back into perdition and say don't worry about this we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord therefore wherefore use this doctrine to comfort one another how many times do you hear this in a bereavement that the authorized system of providing comfort for believers when managing the pain of those who transit is to use this assurance to say do not worry we are still a family we are only now at different planes of reality but that there will be a reunion do you believe this yes jesus is coming back and i assure you jesus is coming soon thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done one more time thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done let's see something apostle peter said it's a word of caution second peter please chapter 3 second peter chapter 3 from verse 3 watch this apostle peter now knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts verse 4 and saying where is the promise of his coming he said questioning the validity of his coming is mockery for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation verse 5 for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of god the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water six whereby the word that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men so there are scoffers who continue to mock these things that we do as we you need to understand this because i'm talking about the coming move of god and we'll be talking about the global harvest if we do not understand this the bible says when the spirit of truth is come that the holy spirit will convict the world of three levels of sin of righteousness and of judgment sometimes um, in a bit to not bring fear we bring the judgment part out it is part of the gospel that a day will come when they who have been given a chance to accept the lordship of jesus christ act of their own volition there will be eternal damnation it is true 
We cannot just talk about the promise of a good life. That is important and that is true. But if our hope is only in this life and in this world, the Bible says we are of all men most miserable. The coming move of God. When the Lord began to teach me this mystery about the mighty manifestation of His power and His grace, and that which will be demanded of the saints in the last days. I was amazed as he began to show me from scripture that he has an end time agenda. And let me start very quickly explaining two mysteries in the Bible. Now, maybe I should say this just by way of... Um, uh, putting it in context every single individual who the bible captures their experience as far as their earth work is concerned they were humans but they embodied systems from adam to abraham to moses these were not just men walking the earth are we together now yes the system of kingdom advance is such that the bodies the actors of that program may change but the program continues regardless the actors are we together so when you study by the spirit you don't just study individuals you move past the individuals to see what they represented as far as the program of God is concerned and one of these mysteries one of these systems is the man that we call Enoch Enoch Theologically speaking was the fourth man from creation Please give us Genesis chapter 5 The Bible, the seventh man I meant to say from creation Enoch is a mystery I'm showing you the sequence of the, the patterns As far as the coming move of God and the end time is concerned So that we understand the construct, we understand the sequence And how to align ourselves the first of the programs of God across the earth is the manifestation of Enoch. Genesis chapter 5. Shila Subrandi Gaskubliasa Hasa Parusia. Genesis 5. To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy We'll see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love We sing holy, holy, holy Verse 21 My verse of emphasis is 24 But I'd like us to start from verse 21 And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years And begat Methuselah Verse 22 says And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters two more verses all the days of Enoch were 365 years please go back to that scripture all the days of Enoch were 365 years think again while you are reading all the days of Enoch were 300 and 65 years 24 he says and Enoch walked with God to the point that he was not that is the similitude of the rapture watch this that Enoch walked to a point where his level of transformation got to a point where this earth was not worthy of remember the Bible tells us that there were certain men Hebrews 11 that the earth was not worthy of for God took him He didn't go God took him He didn't say God I want to return home mm 
<clears throat> his level of work with God and transformation he got to a point where God said no you deserve a higher plane of reality Enoch the manifestation of Enoch is one of the the activities of the spirit that foreruns the coming of Christ Enoch is a representation of intimacy and passion for spiritual things Enoch is a spiritual system that goes past the gate of fame goes past the gate of ambition please look up goes past the gate of the mundane things in this life imagine that a man lived 365 years and all that the Bible can say about such a man is he walked with God what a testimony that you spend your life and the most striking the signature activity of your life was that you walked with God and he walked with God had children and the children did not disrupt his walk with God he had Methuselah he had sons and daughters and yet his focus remained the same he still walked with God until he was not the coming move of God will not just start with revivals uh -uh. it's a restoration of the spirit of Enoch intimacy and desire for God beyond the walls of church beyond ministry beyond man of God beyond preaching beyond visions beyond Rema we will never be able to host what the spirit of God is doing across the nations in this end time if our focus is just preaching and accurate exegesis of the word as powerful as that will be it will be a product of our work with God that the remnant of the house of Jacob the Bible declares they will first bear root downwards you don't see that activity happen but that becomes the stability of the tree and the fruit that it produces Enoch the manifestation of Enoch we see that happen with a man in the Bible called Jacob in Genesis 28 Jacob laid down pastor in a place called Luz and the Bible says that while he slept he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens are we together are we Bible students and angels were ascending and descending at the top of it was God himself and he began to speak to him when he was done from that vision he got up and said ah surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not he says this is the house of God the gate of heaven he anointed the place and because he was not sensitive he was not prepared for the things that God had for him to do the next scene in his life was Laban's house he went through over 20 years of pain disappointment betrayal when that happened when we get to Genesis 32 I'm rushing for the sake of time so we can focus on that coming move of God I'm just trying to give us a preamble when we get to Genesis 32 the Spirit of God is ready to try again with Jacob but there was a price he had to push all his wives away push all his cattle away the Bible says when he was alone there is a realm in God where you don't go as us it is he there is a realm in God where you don't go as husband and wife there is a realm where you don't go as pastor apostle prophet there is a realm where you don't go as preacher musician uh -uh. when he was alone the Bible says a man came and the wrestle began and he said leave me for the day break it Jacob said no I missed it before I know the consequence of living life and advocating a destiny without your presence I will not let you go till you bless me he said what is your name he said Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob was a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed and the Bible says he touched the hollow of his tie this is a mystery that means I become your completion I have done something to you that you can never find balance without me I have become a factor a completer in your life and then he blessed him and the Bible says that he called the place Peniel and the sun arose 
I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Enoch. There is so much business in our world. Now, respectfully speaking, conferences, conventions, church building, projects, even though they look like Christian activities, we do not know to what degree they are distracting us from aligning to this great move of God that is coming. Can I tell you this? If a major part of your life is seen and known by people, you are not truly walking with God. A major part of your life must remain behind the veil. Preaching is, should be a minute fraction of what your life is about. The pandemic forced us because there were no programs. You didn't, you couldn't go out. Many people, including believers, became restless because they've not mastered the art of the secret, the art of the presence. It was such a burden to live without going out, without doing this, because we are used to the ritual and the religion of activities. When you study through scripture, Jesus camped with these people. They spent time with him. Remember my teaching yesterday. Our call is not unto ministry. In its purest form. Our call is unto Jesus. Follow me. Not follow an ambition. I know you will become an apostle one day. But for now. The assignment is follow me. When you follow me. There is a making. When I make you. I send you. The empowerment comes when I send you. Not when I'm making you. Are we together? Enoch. Enoch is the spirit of intimacy, hunger, genuine holiness and passion, consecration, a pursuit for spiritual things. The average man of God, because of the pressure that society, I, I may not blame it sincerely on ministers, but the pressure that society brings to have to make full proof of your ministry puts pressure on us and we would rather that our spiritual lives die and let the church move forward are we together now the bible talks about the first miracle of jesus there was a message there the wedding in cana cana of galilee the bible says there was a feast and in that feast jesus was there but he was not honored he was there Churches were being built, but Jesus was no longer the center. Many things were happening, but Jesus was no longer the center. There were rulers, and the Bible makes a very dangerous statement, and the wine finished. Yet, activities were still happening, but the wine had finished. It took a few people to discern that something is wrong with the formation of this feast. And then Mary, who was representing the ministry of the Holy Spirit, led them to Jesus. And Jesus said, go and do your thing. Do your ministry the way you are doing. They said, no, we are not confused. In the midst of this feast, even though you are not honored, we know. And he said, okay, if you have recognized me, this will be the formula. Start with water. It has to be water before wine. Leave wine. Use this jar. Six, the number of man. Fill it with water. There needs to be that purification. Are we together now? That once you get that water, whilst you are going with water, out of that water, it will start turning to wine. If it is God, it starts with water before it becomes wine. Are we blessed? The pandemic gave me an opportunity to seek the Lord and to press Him for Him with all my heart like never before. It was such a luxury. I did not realize how busy my life was. Now I say this with all humility. It's an honor to serve the body, but careful. We are not Jesus Christ. We are only advocating Him. It was not your face that was on that crucifix. So you have to be keeping to serve the body and do all of these things. It's amazing how many times we forget and we ignore 
the reality of the secret place. And you know what? While you are dying, people still keep clapping. Apostle Joshua Selman, be careful. Men can clap you to a point where you lose out on the program of God. That God used you yesterday does not guarantee he will use you tomorrow. There are standards all the time. Our fathers have taught us just because you were used yesterday does not guarantee that you'll be used tomorrow. I've cried unto God so many times. I said I would give up ministry a thousand times, Pastor Daly, and I mean it from my heart. I'm not just preaching. Oh, away with ministry. I will shut it down a thousand times to preserve his presence. That's where he started with us. From beginning to the end It will always be It's always been you Jesus Not preaching Oh Jesus Nothing else matters Nothing in this world will do ah, That's the spirit of Enoch Hunger for encounters that Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Can I tell you this? This is always the formula. The church history in Nigeria, most of those who were used by God did not want to be used. They were just people who just, there was a hunger and they go to the forest. They were not looking for anything. Lord, more of you, more of your glory. That's all I want. There are several levels of the will of God. There is the predeterminate counsel of God. But there is a way a man can push himself into the current will of God through the sacrifice of alignment. Meaning the script of your destiny did not capture that role. But you so align, you are so available, God cannot deny your presence. An example was Elisha. Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. The next prophet was to come among the sons of the prophet. But he aligned himself. He sold everything. There's something that hunger and sacrifice God does to God. Genuine pursuit. There is nobody who is immune to the temptation of a mundane life. Shut your eyes. Shut your phone. Shut everything and say, Lord, this is about you. I prayed and cried many times to God that anything that sustains the ability to take your place in my life, I'm praying it and advance. May it never come to my life, number one. And number two, may it never be able to take your place in my life. The coming move of God is not, an, is not a manifestation of celebrities. No, celebrity Christianity is going to die a permanent death in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. John said, when the disciples of John came and said, someone just came to town and he's outshining you. John, are you not aware? Won't you fight for your right? John said, it's correct. I must decrease. Mm. I must decrease. More people see you forgetting about you while they are looking at you. The people are needed. The more they see you, they should see him in you. That's if they must remember you is a proof that you are alive in the flesh. Are we together? It's been my advocacy. I never started out. I, I will never it will hire me to share this. That when I start there are many things I never knew they used to give 
if on radio in ministry that you actually preach and people bless you i will almost run away will i be able to sleep it was a derivative of a genuine passion genuine passion I have studied the history of revivals a bit by the great and tell you most people who God really called they ran away they didn't want the stage they wanted him they wanted him they they hungered and they sought his face so much and he found in them vessels vessels of power vessels of grace so the sequence is not rema the sequence is not revelation the sequence is not gifts and celebrities the sequence is first a retreat we will advance by retreating we will have to go back and say lord this is about you now i'm speaking to men and women of god i'm speaking to people want, who want to be featured in the program of god believe me the appetite for a celebrity man of god will only land us in destruction we must go back and know how to hold the four horns of the altar the lord if my life will be like anna the prophetess and no one will see me so be it provided you are glorified in and through my life are we together now please take it higher for me there's a song that captures i i write a lot of songs i be, I, I receive a lot of songs that have to do with intimacy and hunger and passion not because i'm a man of god because i have found out in scripture that every time god wants to use men his first assignment is to call them to himself please don't forget this moses you cannot go to pharaoh the way you are your first call is to the burning bush interact with his majesty first leave pharaoh behind i will send you moses was so wise he said go to pharaoh moses said who shall i tell pharaoh has sent me i cannot advocate over an, a god i do not know pharaoh will ask me questions who sent you this is a question that most people have not been able to answer we fail to answer it in mission fields we fail to answer it through church projects because whoever sent you is the one who backs you who sent you can you take it high my voice forgive me you have my everything you've heard that song you have my everything we were in a meeting many years ago and it was it was a meeting that was just drawing out every flesh to just die to say lord this is not i i think those kinds of meetings must be revived in the body of christ it's not just that you invite someone and come and sit down and hear someone lead you and no there are times where we just come and lie before his majesty we cast our crowns no matter what the achievement is roll from pillar to post and cry before him and say lord search my heart try my thoughts if there be any wicked way in me lead me to the way everlasting it is that state of brokenness and contriteness of heart he says a broken spirit thou O god will not despise take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord anoint my everything use my everything i give my everything you have my everything say take all of me all of me lord the bible says i beseech thee brethren 
apostle Paul is teaching now by the message of God Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 I beseech ye brethren by the message of God that ye offer your bodies not just your spirits your bodies as a living sacrifice he says holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of worship in fact the Bible says to offer unto him the calves of our lips genuine surrender to get saved you don't need to give your life to Jesus you need to receive his life but to be used withhold it many of them are around different prayer groups scattered across this nation men and women some of them do not feel qualified in themselves some of them do not even know that those groups were the betting of the spirit oh it may not be the joshua selmans i assure you there are many others elijah you are not the only one there are seven thousand others under the custody of obediah who have not yet bowed to bell the spirit of enoch the grace for communion it says the grace of our lord jesus christ the fellowship the koinonia the participation of the spirit let it tabernacle be with you we must return the pattern that hosts God in the beginning God it is a non-negotiable formula not in the beginning ministry not in the beginning tongues not in the beginning power not in the beginning fasting not in the beginning prayer they are wonderful but the sequence of our pursuit must be God not even kingdom God can still kill if God is not above them God can give you something that will fight him he must be exalted and enthroned Lord of all are we still together please pay attention to this Pastor Dele this is the reason why so many people fall in the wayside because whatever motivated you into ministry is what will sustain you once you are there if you want a career some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears it was never about money it was never about the mic it was never about membership dear lord it was about your presence my hunger I thank God for the blessings and the privilege of an encounter with Jesus but if I never met him I will still be grateful in life and in death this is the spirit that will bring back Christ we need to respectfully go back to edit a lot of things we are doing in the body of Christ it is the reason why we do not see his power Gideon cried and said why do we not see these powers again there has to be a restoration of genuine intimacy with God gone are the days where people can shut their doors and you call them they say I'm having time with God right now when you call someone and say I'm having time they say you want to die of hunger whoever told us the presence of God brings men down whoever told us this is the reason why there are certain things we don't hear again January is a very strategic time in the body of Christ we have people fasting and many times fasting religiously just for 10 days 30 days or whatever and we finish and we don't know to what end most of the fast respectfully speaking is just need driven I was told if I fast I can get a job wonderful but it's more than that for they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me you are the reason i leave you're the one for me you're the one for me you are the reason 
reason I leave You're the one for me Come and make my heart your home Come and be everything I am and all I know Search me through and through My heart becomes a man lived for 365 years and all that the Bible says about that man is an emod yet he wrote a book and the Bible does not even talk about the book he wrote and dwell so much in it a testament seventh man from creation who taught him the value of God's presence Listen to me, truly speaking, I pray, I pray for us in the studio and for as many who are following. For someone, this is a message as to why things may not be working around your life and ministry. Because your focus is on your ego. You think it's on the ministry, but it's on your reputation. It's an attempt to show this thing is working. Till my heart becomes... Oh, be magnified, oh Lord. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing. Can't do, oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified. I covet this testimony with my life. That if Christ tarries at the end of my life, let it not be how many people were healed. Thank God for all of those things. Not how many houses you bought. Not how many cars you bought. MOG. Not how many conferences you attended. The testimony of Enoch and Joshua Selman walked with God. It's a testimony that our mundane pursuit will not give us the wisdom to see, to discern, and to appreciate. It is the noblest testimony that can be given for any man. Walk with God. If your presence will not go with me, do not send me. What am I doing? If your presence will not go with me, let the conference end. I'm not too embarrassed to stop it. If your, comfort, if your presence will not go with me, if my passion for you will suffer because of ministry, let the ministry go away. Do you have the courage to drive every other thing in your life? Abraham, take now thy son whom thou lovest and offer him. This is the price to host God. Everything that represents your value and worth must die at that altar. The price for life is death. Only dead men can carry God. Only dead men will be able to advance the frontiers of the kingdom in this end time. Am I boring you? This is very serious. Our fathers in this nation, many of them who spearheaded the revival, they were not very educated. But my goodness, they had hunger. How did the prayer camp start that we now build? Those prayer camps were not built out of ambition. They were built out of a desire to have a place. 
to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you they wanted a, a place away from every noise to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you that's what drove them to turn forest into campgrounds oh Was he not seeking the face of God that made men like Apostle Babalola to pray and they had encounters? They prayed and water came out of the rock that we still consume today. It was not an ambition. It was something that it was a product of hunger. Don't downplay the miracles that can come out of a place of intimacy. If the intimacy between wife can produce another life, what can the intimacy between you and God produce? I'm not talking of two people who are born again. A man and his wife who are not born again and simply because they pay the price of intimacy a life can come out of it not just joy not just a relationship you claim you are his bride first show me your pregnancy the proof of the intimacy and show me the children that have come as proof that you are a faithful bride was it not the rebellion of Vashti that drove her away from becoming queen Esther knew this that I'm only queen because I married the king my focus is not the palace I have an agenda a man wants to destroy the people but it does not start by advocating an agenda it is all about the king first that was a strategy the book of Esther is a prophetic book a woman was used by God her man wanted to annihilate the Jews the spirit of the Antichrist was at work in him and for Esther to do that if she had God because you see a man had built a relationship with Ahasuerus that would not be easily destroyed not even because of a woman she had to use her worship and her relationship to win the heart of Ahasuerus I show you the protocol of intimacy it starts with him not it King Ahasuerus she came to him he lifted up the golden censer what do you want he said I want to do something that flaunts your glory I want to set up a party for you wow this is what I wanted Vashti to do she built a camp for herself and for God she was only queen because she married the king I bring you a prophetic word of caution oh body of Christ let us be careful lest we make the mistake of Vashti for the things that are written aforetime the Bible says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope that hope that does not make us shame Vashti began to run her own program when the king sent for her she forgot that she was in the palace only because of him so when Esther came she came not forgetting where she was coming from her goal was to save the Jews but it started with the king don't forget her goal was to save the Jews but it started with the king she organized the feast the king was so happy he said do it again until it got to a feast that the Bible calls the feast of wines there is something about wine <laughs> that's not where I'm going to this night but I have done a teaching on it already and she came to the king and spoke about Haman and the king went to his garden to think the relationship I have built with her man would I let it just get destroyed and he came out and saw her man begging her and thought he wanted to rape his wife he said that's it I found what I'm looking for do you know how many things many requests that we pray for thank you for watching like our videos share and subscribe thank you